I'm Nick Snow, watching Government for Oil and Gas Journal in Washington, D.C. Utah's oil and gas activity, while not as large as some states, has taken similar hits since crude prices plunged from $100 a barrel in mid-2014 to around $45 a barrel in early August. Figures from the state's Division of Oil, Gas and Mining indicate production is falling in 2015. While not strictly comparable, it's down from 2014 four-year peaks of 40.9 million barrels of oil and 453.2 billion cubic feet of gas to 13.2 million barrels and 151.4 BCF through August 11th. Companies completed projects they already had underway, said Utah Petroleum Association President Lee J. Peacock. Our statewide rig count went from between 28 and 29 13 months ago to between 5 and 6 now. Some companies are taking time to do maintenance in workovers to maximize production from existing wells, but there's very little new drilling going on. Utah's Department of Workforce Services reports that in 2015's first quarter, oil, gas, and mining employment fell year to year by 7.9% in Duchesne County and 2.3% in Uinta County, compared with increases of 3.7% for the state overall and 2.2% for the U.S. as a whole. Local governments are feeling the pain. Royalties and mineral lease monies, which come from production, are down substantially, Uinta County Commissioner Mark Raymond told OGJ. That has a direct impact on services we provide. We've had to tighten our belts as a county government, he told OGJ on August 11th. In addition, sales tax is down. Our property tax is still healthy and our budget is fairly secure. Nevertheless, we are feeling the impacts of lower oil prices. Utah's downstream oil community also reacted. Some Salt Lake Area refiners modified their long-term plans based on possibly lower projected Uinta Basin production, Peacock said. Uinta Soro temporarily shelved its proposed Uinta Express pipeline from the Uinta Basin in May it cited economic uncertainties arising from depressed crude prices. That's unfortunate because truck traffic from those fields is an issue here, Peacock said. Almost all the black paraffinic crude from those fields now moves by truck over highways. Uinta, Duchesne, and four more of the state's eastern counties formed a coalition to address infrastructure needs. It's interested in access to markets and ways to advance pipelines, rail, and other energy transportation opportunities, including power transmission, said Laura Nelson, executive director of the state's Energy Development Office. Once the oil and gas industry comes back, it will need more electricity, she explained. Companies can't make those investments now because of low oil prices, but the state can look at preliminary routes and possible environmental impacts. That way, when activity ramps up, we'll be ready to move. That's watching government for this week. In Washington, I'm Nick Snow for Oil and Gas Journal.